Well, I enjoy wine with a meal. But, I mean, obviously, I'll go and have a coffee before I went anywhere near the car. No, oh, I can have a drink probably, probably more than most. This but year, the breathalyzer sure. celebrates its 30th birthday. So much other people but while we're bombarded with a salvo of don't drink and drive ads, the government is missing a trick. Because there's a new menace on our streets. Drivers so stoned, their eyeballs are pointing straight up through the tops of their heads. And beginning to gauge the enormity of the problem is like trying to scoop air into a heap. Nobody knows. All we can do is guess. In this country, over a million people will, at some time or another, get in and out of cars while they are completely off their heads on drugs. That is scary. And it's even more worrying when you read a recent report that says a fifth of all drivers killed in road traffic accidents have traces of illegal drugs in their bloodstream. This is a problem that's bigger than anybody realises. It's a huge problem and quite frankly I'm surprised anyone could think any differently. There's difficulty from the police. You've got drug squads who are under-resourced. They are tasked to try and identify and arrest the dealers. You've got the road traffic department that are very geared up towards breathalysers and drink driving, but would, in my experience, find it very difficult to identify somebody who's actually under the influence in drugs. And don't think it's just 18-year-olds at clubs and raves or junkies in caftans and open-toed sandals. It could be a next-door neighbour, a van driver, a teacher, even a driving instructor. I would start off in the morning with some heroin, um, taking two, three lessons, uh, back home with the excuse of uh, popping to the toilet and topping myself up with some more heroin, back out again, teaching people to drive for two or three more hours. Then I would again do a detour to home, same excuse, have some more heroin, and that would try and keep me going through till sort of tea time, five, six o'clock. And this is no secret to the mandarins in Whitehall. Mention drugs and driving to any government minister and they'll have the wobbles because they know at the moment there's little that can be done. But this is nothing new. People drugging and driving, they've been doing it for years. Um, I've been taking drugs since I was 13 and driving since I was 17. I'm now in my 40s and I've never ever driven a car without being under the influence of one drug or another. What sort of drugs have you taken while you've driven? Um, cannabis, speed, heroin, magic mushrooms, amyl nitrate, <laughs> you name it. And can I ask you what you do for a living? I'm a teacher. The rave culture has made recreational drugs available everywhere, from council estates to Hooray Henry wine bars. And the relentless search for a bigger high means that there are drivers out there who mix mind-numbing cocktails of every drug going. Everyone has to drive right out to like the middle of nowhere if you go into like an organised rave or like a jungle or something. And there's no way you'll last out the whole night if you're not on something. And then um, to get back, they have to drive back so most of them are on something when they drive back. You're going to jump through red lights if there's no one looking, overtake if there's no one looking, shout at people if they're in your way. You're going to do anything. My friend tried some heroin for the first time and, and we're both off his faces on heroin. Um, we're, we're driving along on this um, like country where we live and we looked at each other after a bit and then looked at the road and we drove about 44 per bank without even realising it. And do you know where the perfect place to do drugs is? The car. More people buy, sell and use drugs in cars than anywhere else. Don't think being off your face just makes you mellow. If you're fooling around with the hard stuff, crack, coke, LSD or ease, then the word is wasted. I worked for a company and I always had a problem with drugs. I'd be up all night till it was time to go to work. Then go down, get in the vehicle, no sleep, 
drive to the depot, load the van up, go out, do deliveries, but that to be done extra quick, speeding, doing all the breaking laws all the time. We know that drugs contribute to road rage, car crime and fatalities, but nailing someone who's on something isn't easy. To insist on a blood test, first you've got to arrest them. Then you've got to check for traces of up to six different types of drugs in the bloodstream. And that costs around £600 a throw. No wonder the police don't know which way to turn. But in Germany, they may have come up with a solution. Roadside drug test kits. When the Germans piloted these swabs, 50% of the drivers they tested came up positive. You wipe them over a driver's forehead, and if there are drugs in the system, the indicator turns pink. Swabs like these may be piloted in this country early next year because the government knows they've got to do something and do something fast. But in the meantime I can offer no solutions. I can't even tell you how to spot a drugged up driver. But what I can say is this. If you're watching and you think it's cool, clever or smart to drive while you're stoned, it isn't. Just think about the rest of us who have to use the roads. And listen to someone whose life was completely ruined by drugs and driving. Don't do it. Just don't do it. You've got your life. It's too dangerous. Get back to reality. Just give up drugs. <laughs>